So too. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ravi, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Avantika Tomar, and I'm a partner with EY Parthenon, which is a strategy consulting firm, like uh, Ravi just mentioned. I think the good thing, and you know, when I first got this invite, um, you know, I was super excited because I do tend to straddle the two worlds of industry and academia. So, by the weekdays, I'm a strategy consultant, and by the weekend, I'm actually teaching in business schools across the country. So, for better or for worse, I do see both sides of the coin. Perhaps a little bit more of the industry side, uh, but I do understand the challenges of academia as well. So I'll talk about three things in my introductory comments, and then we'll, of course, continue the discussion. I suppose one is when we think about our higher education institutes, we are talking about knowledge. right? The, if you ask any professor, I'm sure the fundamental thing that they are trying to impart to their students is knowledge. right? Cut to, and I can see a lot of you know students here. There's some Gen Z sitting there. There's a little bit of Gen Z on this side as well. Cut to the, you know, the other side of the fence, which is kind of my side as an employer. Um, knowledge is great because it's, it's the bedrock, it's the foundation. But actually, what I would much rather have is skills, right? Because the, those skills are what are going to make me leverage this person from day one, as opposed to, again, kind of coaching, teaching, training them to how to use their knowledge on the industry side or in the real world, as they say, right? So I think the first theme for me that is very important is let's not go too much on either side, right? We need to find the right balance between knowledge and skills. And I'm not sure we have that at the moment, right? We are either overly lopsided on the knowledge side, or if we think about, I think Rajni spoke about ed techs. Sometimes I feel you know, that ed tech grounding is a little bit too much on the skill side, whereas that foundation, that bedrock is missing. So I don't think we found the balance yet, but we need to. One way I would think um, to do that is perhaps try and go a little bit away from our, um, sorry for the word, but obsession with degrees. Right? We are a very degree obsessed country. Um, I don't think everything needs to be taught via uh, undergraduate, postgraduate degree. And thank you for everyone who's nodding. It encourages me. Uh, uh, but there is the concept of micro-credentialization, right? Um, the bridge between industry and academia does not need to be by, let's revamp the entire education system. No, I don't think so. Keep the foundation. Keep the bedrock. Keep the knowledge superimpose on top of that these micro-credentials, which are focused or geared towards skills and, 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 and these micro-creds or certifications that actually then bridge the gap between what the university was teaching versus what the employer was asking for. So that's kind of just one theme. And I guess, again, uh, back to Rajni's point, a very good way to do that, I would think, would be online teaching and learning, right? It is micro-credentialized. It has to be short, sharp, uh, focused, and online is going to be a great way to do that. The second thing, um, and quite related to it, and I think, Ravi, you said this in your opening remarks, was around um, how what we are teaching hasn't changed, right? And I hate to admit it, but that's actually true, right? Um, uh, even, even in some of the institutes where I teach or um, you know, what I would like to think are absolutely premium institutes of the country, I still see there are things that are being taught that, are, that have absolutely no relevance in the real world, right? Uh, and therefore, you, you start to see a lot of the ed tech. So I, I teach in business schools, which means a lot of what I'm seeing is deeply embedded in business education. But if you think about what a lot of our cream institutes of the country are not able to do, um, there are these all these ed techs that are coming out. I think in the previous session, we were talking about how startups want to hire a lot of young people, but they just don't have the right skills, right? So I think what needs to go hand in hand, therefore, is curriculum, right? Are we adapting, modernizing, bringing our curriculum into the real world um, and into the modern world? I think that's that's the second theme. And when I say that, I don't just mean um, you know, obviously, you won't change the mechanics of things. You won't change the theoretical foundation. You won't change any of that. 
the application of those theories are very different today than they were when I was a student, as an example, right? Because um, you know, we are looking at Industrial Revolution 4.0, we are looking at Future of Work, we are looking at AI, ML, Chat, GPT, etc. None of that existed when I was a student. And therefore, even if the theories are the same, the application of that theoretical foundation is quite different. And, the, and, and hence, curriculum needs to just upgrade itself a little bit. Um, the, the second part of that for me is, um, it, right now, again, we are overly focused on technical skills, right? Across, I mean, whether it's medicine or engineering or business, we are overly focused on technical skills. Where I suppose industry academia partnership needs to come in and play a role is can we broaden that from just pure play technical skills to business skills to societal skills, right? I mean, I'm sure any one of us who has ever hired anybody has gone through this experience of on paper, great, at work, wonderful very difficult to get this person to understand what the problem is, what the business challenge is, what the, you know, and then communication, leadership, the ability to work as a team, all of those are very important skills and unfortunately quite underrated in our, um, on, on the academic side. So where industry can partner with academia is how do we bring technical, business, societal, soft skills, whatever you want to call it, all of those things together as opposed to just making somebody a, uh, you know, a domain expert, if you will. So that 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 was just my second theme, and I think it kind of quite closely relates to the first one. And then the last one, and Rajni, I think you mentioned some of this, so thanks for that, is really the personalization of education. I think all of us in the room have made the mistake of um, deciding what the students should be studying, right? Um, either as professors, uh, teachers, lecturers, faculty, or as the industry. I want you to study this, pick up this skill because it's important for me. I think the best outcome will come only when the student uh, is in the driver's seat, right? We want the student to be able to say, here's what my passion is. This is where my interests lie. Is there a way for me to now marry my passion, my interests, to what you are telling me university and what you are telling me company or industry right i think we are we are all kind of trying to force fit our understanding of what students should go through and students should learn without keeping them in the center so ravi like you said there is government industry and academia i would add a fourth vertex to that and i would say let's not leave the student behind because otherwise we'll keep you know, trying to shove a square peg in a round hole, right? We'll keep trying to do that, and then we'll keep thinking, why isn't this working? And, you know, this time we got the industry academia partnership right. It's because it didn't fit or it didn't work for the student. So those are just my three thoughts. I think a lot of it does have to do with all of us kind of upgrading our thinking when it comes to content, when it comes to degrees and how important degrees are when it comes to um, the the right balance between knowledge and skills. Um, but then let's just make sure that the enablement of a lot of what I'm saying does indeed come through online and it does indeed come through technology. So that's me. Thank you so much. We'll discuss again in a bit. <laughs>